And in India, people are very spiritual.、Mm. So, also a very similar kind. If you want to be nice and spiritual, you should not talk about money.、Mm. So, that's what、um, it creates this love and hate relationship.、Mm. As much as Indian people love money,、yeah. because you know, people buy gold and wear it、yeah. and they believe in wealth,、yeah. but at the same time, they feel embarrassed and shy. So,、uh, they hate money. This worker mentality,、mm. you have to work hard to get money.、Mm. That's written in your、uh, blueprint of money.、Yeah. And unless you change it, you, you think you have to keep getting.、Mm. Uh, you have to keep working in、mm. order to get. If you're a saver, you should spend more.、Mm. If you're a spender, you should start saving. saving more. <laughs> And if you're a moneymaker, you should enjoy your life. <laughs> money is tied up with your survival.、Yeah. Unless you buy food and water and shelter, You're gonna die.、Mm. But it's just a subconscious fear.、Yeah. And, and it's so deeply rooted inside. So、uh, it's not lo- a logical brain thinking. Mm. Mm. So、um, if you are watching this uh, thing, uh, uh, you have internet access,、yeah. you have an i- a iPhone or Android or a computer,、yeah. an internet. That's like. That's luxury. Luxury.、Mm. <laughs>Unexpected event happening. Last week we were scheduled to do a Zoom call, and the second I asked you,、um, Where are you joining from? and then you're from Delhi. Oh, I'm, I'm going there in three days. And、uh, like, Ken, we're not recording this online. If you're coming to Delhi, you <laughs> have to come, and you know, we should record this in person because this is so much fun. Yeah, thank you so much for jumping on this uh, uh, fun ride with me. Yeah. 100%. So, Ken, I want to jump straight into it. And、uh, because you have been teaching people for almost two decades now about、mm-hmm. money or more. Yes. Yeah. So,、uh, in India, when it comes to money, there is a lot of taboo. There's a lot of,、um, you know, notion,、mm-hmm. not necessarily like a very good, you know, people feel about money when it comes to this. A lot of, let's say, you know, problem with receiving. There's a problem with,、uh, you know, investing. There's、mm-hmm. a problem with talking about it. So,、uh, you know,、uh, why do you think like people don't really talk a lot about money? And,、uh, you know, and where does that sort of come comes from? I think it's, it's the same anywhere in the world,、mm-hmm. uh, but it's a little bit of a different kind of taboos.、Uh, I wanted to be an anthropologist when I was in my、um, uh, youth.、Mm-hmm. Uh, it's because I'm so fascinated with the difference of the cultures. And、uh, European taboos. They have this Christianity,、mm. like if you are religious, you are not supposed to talk about money.、Mm. And in India, people are very spiritual.、Mm. So, also a very similar kind, if you want to be nice and spiritual, you should not talk about money.、Mm. So, that's what、um, it creates this love and hate relationship.、Mm. As much as Indian people love money,、yeah. because you know, people buy gold and wear it、yeah. and they believe in wealth,、yeah. but at the same time, they feel embarrassed and shy. So,、uh, they hate money.、Mm-hmm. They hate at least talking about money,、mm-hmm. even though secretly they want it.、Mm-hmm. So, this love and hate relationship、uh, creates a confusion in you.、Mm-hmm. That's why people want to make more money, but at the same time feel shy about doing it.、Mm-hmm. And also, as a, you know, as a culture, at large, India, we are big time savers. Like we save and save and save. And in、mm-hmm. some cases, we are completely e logical, or let's say, you know, we, we completely, it's just like something that you can't fathom on how our brain operates.、Mm-hmm. When it comes like someone's wedding, like we spend crazily, like <laughs> way,、uh, you know, outside of our means. Yes, like Brazilian. Yeah. <laughs>、uh-huh. <laughs> they, they save for the real carnival, right?、Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and that's one way of living too. So,、mm-hmm. I'm not denying、um, a lifestyle that. You save enough money so you, you can have fun.、Mm-hmm. Um, because Japanese people save, save, save and die.、Mm. So their kids or、uh, their spouse can waste their money too.、Mm. So uh, um, when it comes to money, anything is possible. So as long as you don't regret,、mm. 
but a lot of people carry regret in their sixties and seventies mm. that uh, they should have done something with money, mm. and, or they there's something that they should not have done with money. Mm. So either way, uh, as long as you have regrets, um, it's not fun. So I want you to start thinking ahead of times. So uh, when when you are in the uh, deathbed, you don't regret a thing about money. Mm. Mm. So when you say, you know, like again, money is one of those topics that everybody needs it. Not everybody want to talk about it. Everybody wants it. Not everybody is able to make it. Uh, so let's, you know, start this conversation by talking about, you know, a lot of people want to make money. And, uh, and there are some of the, you know, things that you've also outlined in your book about the concept about happy money uh, and unhappy money. We'll talk about that in a minute. But when it comes to, you know, making money, uh, you know, what are the few things, what are the, some of the uh, belief system or what are the things that really stopping people from making money? It's um, the notion that uh, wealthy people are doing something bad, mm -hmm. or some, something shady, sketchy. So that's why they can take advantage of other people mm -hmm. and make money. So uh, if you know a happy, wealthy people then your notion about wealth changes. Mm -hmm. I met many happy, wealthy people who have made so many people happy, and as a result, they receive money. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, money making is like a, it's like a being voted mm -hmm. by people, like how much, um, how much, how great work you've done. Mm -hmm. like for example, I've sold uh, almost nine million copies of my books. That means that people love my books. It's not just one book. So, and for the past 20 years, if people ever found out my book is not good, they're not going to buy again, right? True. Yeah, and so uh, I have a history of entertaining people in the past 20 years, and mm -hmm. people kept buying all my uh, 100 and some, some books. So that means I have kept uh, pay people very mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. As a result, I receive money. Mm -hmm. So as long as you can do that, all the money uh, is what I call happy money. So if you think... More uh, happiness uh, you generate, you receive uh, more money. Then people will, uh, will, will go for it. But if you feel like if you become a, a bad person by making money, you don't want to be bad. That's mm -hmm. why I keep my life simple. I don't. I don't need a big amount of money because I want to be a good person. Mm -hmm. If you have that idea like that, you cannot make money. Mm -hmm. So. You say that it's fundamentally the belief system that we have. And yes. do you think that for anybody who's listening to this and wants to make a lot of money, mm -hmm. the first step, if we have to lay down this in a step-by-step -step right. process, the first step is understand what your beliefs about money are. Yes. I'm uh, doing a three-day workshop uh, in, in my re uh, retreat center. And uh, I often talk about um, just um, inventory of your beliefs. Uh, we have this belief system um, as, lo as long as we are five or six, and we've been taught about money. What are the things that your parents told you? Uh, for example, like money is bad, you know, you have to work to death to get money. <laughs> you have to say uh, no to your true wanting in order to bring money and bring food on the table. So there are so many negative things about money uh, that we've been taught and brainwashed for the past 20, 30, 40 years. So you have to uh, unteach us about uh, money concept. And then if you can turn all the concepts, uh, negative one, uh, from negative one to the positive ones, you like uh, uh, money more. So give us an example on maybe pick one of those uh, beliefs. So for example, in India, let's say one of the things are, like you mentioned, you need to work really, really, really hard to make mm -hmm. a lot of money. Yes. Mm -hmm. So... There are uh, so many ways to create money. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, mostly uh, it's a sweat equity. Mm -hmm. You know, you sweat, you get money. Mm -hmm. So you work in the labor, mm -hmm. you sweep the floor, or even uh, white colors. You know, if you're an IT engineer, you have to work so, so many hours, create a software, and then you get money. That kind of money is also one way. Mm -hmm. The other one is a dividend from the uh, stocks and the royalties. Like for me, I have uh, uh, income uh, of um, that from the books I wrote 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So the work I did 20 years ago still pays me. Mm -hmm. I have more than 
20 or 30 books that pay me from the past. Yeah. So a lot of people... The work is already done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, a lot of people work at the present time and then get money. That's why all the money you generate mm -hmm. will be spent at, mm -hmm. by the end of your month. Mm -hmm. So there's no money, uh, much money left. So the wealthy people get money from the past work. And only a few percentage of people get money from the past work. Mm. You, get, you work now, you get money. Mm. If you don't work now, you have nothing. Yeah. So, for example, if you know more about money, mm. and if you get a system set up for you, you don't have to work physically. Mm -hmm. And then you can get the stream of uh, income. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is another step that you can uh, think, think about it. But this worker mentality, mm -hmm. you have to work hard to get money. Mm -hmm. That's written in your uh, blueprint of money. Yeah. And unless you change it, you, you think you have to keep getting. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have to keep working in mm -hmm. order to get. Mm -hmm. So like you said, right, make a list of inventory of your yes. belief systems. Mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, you know, one of the ways that I, whenever I try to decode beliefs about anything in my life, mm -hmm. the way I do is I sit down and try and remember as many events in my life about that particular thing. For right. example, if I'm trying to find my beliefs about relationships, mm -hmm. then I'll go and sit down and just make a list of all the things, you know, that I can remember. And, uh, you know, maybe, you know, that's that's how I do it. If I, let's say, want to find my beliefs about mm -hmm. money, I'll remember what were the things that my mother used to tell me mm -hmm. or what are the things that, you know, people around me were talking about when it comes to money. And maybe, you know, that shaped the way I sort of think about money. And, uh, you know, and one of the very recent realization that I've had was because we've all, you know, I've grown with not a lot of money. One of the things that I strongly, uh, you know, naturally occurred to me was when given a choice between a comfort and uh, you, you know, saving money, then mm -hmm. I'll always go for something that will save money, not like and my comfort will always take like, you know, second uh, priority, whether that's, let's say, when you're traveling and you want to book a, you know, place to stay or maybe you want to buy some gadget or when you want to buy anything, it's always like, okay, you know, price first, comfort second. And that's mm -hmm. what a lot of people who are listening to this can relate as well. Um, so, you know, when I realized, oh, I have never thought that, you know, while I'm not a heavy spender or I'm not somebody who spends a lot of money exorbitantly here and there, I'm not wasting it. Also, I'm compromising on the comfort as well. And that was a big revelation for me. And I had to sort of, you know, that is, the, that is like how I sort of do it. You know, is there anything that you want to share on how they can go about making the inventory? And once you know, <laughs> yes. what do you do next? Okay. So uh, um, on top of what you said, I want to add something. Uh, uh, there is something called money types. Mm. You are a money saver type. Mm. You may be a money maker type. You may be a warrior type, yeah. and uh, so a saver type too. So depending on which personality, I have a different um, prescription. Yeah. Because if you're a saver, you should spend more. Mm. If you're a spender, you should start saving, saving more. <laughs> and if you're a money maker, you should enjoy your life. Yeah. So um, I interestingly, people fall into a, a one category. Mm -hmm. Could be a mix. Mix. But uh, if you are a, a spender type you are afraid of uh, the fear of missing out, FOMO. Mm. And also, if you're a saver, you're afraid that one day uh, you have no money left, so you'll be in the mm. street. Mm. So um, either way, you worry about it. So um, my suggestion is a worry-free free life. That means that you don't have to worry about a thing. Mm. Uh, so uh, the second step would be you have to learn how to trust how to trust your future. Mm -hmm. You know, the, all this money-related stress comes from uh, not being able to trust the future because we might end up being on the street. Mm -hmm. We may have no money in the bank account, so we have a trouble. So whatever that is, we have a distrust for the future. So as long as you're um, okay for the future, uh, you don't have to worry about your money and life. And that is a, a happy state. Uh, and I think one of the biggest reasons that we are stressed about money is not for our present condition. Right. It's for our future, right? Yes. Yeah. So if you can trust your future, you can start doing what you love, hmm. which I recommend. 
Because by doing what you love, uh, your talent will show up. I never knew I could write until I was 33. Mm. And I, I was so surprised I could write. Mm. My parents were shocked. My, all my friends were just laughing at me. Are you writing a book? <laughs> because I never thought I'd write. Yeah. But after discovering I have these skills for writing, I kept writing and writing and writing. And then uh, look what happened. I sold mm. 9 million copies. Yeah. And I'm invited to many different countries and I'm here too. Yeah. So if you improve your gifts and just keep polishing it, mm. one day you'll be so surprised mm. uh, what your gifts are going to bring you yeah. to the world. Yeah. And also uh, that brings uh, new opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of money, and also fun uh, memories, mm. which I'm experiencing right at this yeah. moment Absolutely. in Delhi. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, you know, Ken... One thing that we said, okay, make a list of the beliefs that you have. Yes. And uh, on that, on top of that, we said, believe, have a belief that you your future is going to be uh, okay. You're going to mm -hmm. be taken care of. Right. Uh, having that, you know, fundamental belief, and I want to just quickly share how I sort of started thinking about how I started making myself believe uh, that things are going to be taken care of in the future. It's like, okay, wait, think for a minute. What is the time in your life where you wanted something really bad and then you were not able to get it because you didn't have money? Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember when I was uh, in my school, after I completed my school, I wanted to go to the college. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, of course, um, you know, my parents were not in position to pay for my college fee. But then I ended up still going to the college because my uncle decided that, hey, you know what, I'm going to pay for his college education. And, you know, that didn't stop me from going to, let's say, you know, college. After that, uh, you know, when I was at college, then I got scholarship in the second year. Nice. right? Like full fee waiver scholarship. And then that, that was taken care of. And, uh, you know, my parents wanted to build a home and they were able to do it. And I, and I, was t I remember telling my mother, you know, a couple of uh, months back, like, hey, mom, think about this. Uh, you know, you were always worried about future, but think about this. What point of time in your life that you wanted something and that didn't happen? Whether that is sister's wedding, whether that's building home, whether that's getting both of your college to uh, both of your kids to college, all of it has been taken care of. Then it will be taken care of in the future as well. Then why do you want to worry? And that is, you know, Ken had a very fundamental strong shift in how I thought about my future. Mm. You know, and I think Beautiful. Yeah, and I think that's a really, really powerful one to just look at your own life and then say that, you know, you will fundamentally be taken care of. Yes. Yeah, so uh in my seminar I I, I I usually talk to thousands of people all the time. Mm. And then uh I ask this fun question, how many of you have died of hunger? <laughs> <laughs> and this is Especially if you're here, you're not, you've never, you know, out of food yeah. and everybody looks um, okay. But we are always worried that someday I have no money, mm -hmm. no food, I'll we're going to die. Yeah. Right. But it's uh, uh, our um, subconsciously, it's such a deep rooted fear mm -hmm. of survival. Mm -hmm. So uh, to be, uh, to survive, we need, we think we need money. Mm -hmm. Because money is tied up with your survival. Yeah. Unless you buy food and water and shelter, you're going to die. Mm. But it's just a subconscious fear. Yeah. And, and it's so deeply rooted inside. So uh, it's not lo a logical brain thinking. Mm. Mm. So um, if you are watching this uh, thing, uh, uh, you have internet access. Yeah. You have an a iPhone or Android or a computer. Yeah. An internet. That's like... That's luxury. Luxury. Mm. <laughs> You're not dying tomorrow. <laughs> so if you have that kind of uh, uh, abundance, you can start counting how much uh, wealth you have. Mm. Wealth is not just doesn't show up in uh, numbers in your bank account. It's about the experiences. You get to learn new things, and you have this freedom mm -hmm. to learn new things in, on the Internet. So um, you can do anything. Um, that's what I want to share. Mm -hmm. you know, if you set an intention mm -hmm. to that. And if, as long as you don't give up, mm -hmm. you can do anything. Mm -hmm. So I've been uh, suggesting people to write a book mm -hmm. if the book inside is just waking up. Yeah. And I'm sure uh, all the listeners and viewers mm -hmm. are feeling something funny going on in yeah. your heart. Mm -hmm. Because everyone is born with a book mm -hmm. and, or of some kind. Mm -hmm. 
and it, it's, it's getting ready to come out.、Mm-hmm. So I'm just suggesting people to respect that.、Mm-hmm. And then when the time is right,、yeah. um, it's going to come out.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's really、uh, you know, powerful. And also, one of the things that in our culture, and which you, you know, shared in your book as、mm-hmm. well, is that we have a problem with receiving, right?、Uh, you know, in India, A lot of relatives, when they visit, they give the kids like some money or they bring some stuff. And then parents are always like, hey, don't take that money, say no to that. So, do you think like having a problem with receiving is also one of the really,、uh, you know, biggest c h a l l e n g e for people to not make a lot of money? Right. We are so good at giving.、Mm. We want to give, but we are so bad at receiving. So,、uh, we, we have like a PhD in giving, but we are.、Uh, Kindergarten, <laughs> grade one level of receiving. We feel so embarrassed. We feel so shy. We feel bad about receiving. But when you think of giving and receiving cycle, somebody has to receive、mm-hmm. in, in order for somebody to give. So by your receiving, you complete the cycle of giving and receiving. So somebody has to be the giver and somebody has to be the receiver. So if you are willing, vulnerable enough to receive, You can give the opportunity for someone to give. So I think receiver needs a gut because everybody wants to be a giver, <laughs> not the receiver. So if you become a receiver, you are giving the opportunity of the giver to enjoy it. So it's, I think, a more courageous thing to do、uh, to receive.、Mm-hmm. So you have to learn how to receive.、Mm-hmm. By receiving so much,、mm-hmm. you can give.、Mm-hmm. So,、uh, I received so much money by,、uh, mm. through my books, book royalties. So, I'm willing to share what I, what I receive with so many other people、mm. uh, who are financially in need. And、uh, we receive incredibly much more、um, money than three of us. My family can live.、Mm. But it doesn't require so much money. It's only three of us. So, we can、um, uh, provide、uh, money for many other families.、Mm. So,、um, if you receive more, You can give more.、Mm. So, if you're bad at receiving,、mm. think of、uh, what you, how you can play with the money you receive.、Mm. You can give more too. So, by understanding this concept of receiving and giving, you can be a great receiver and also you can be a great giver at the same time.、Mm. But you have to receive first、mm. in, order to be, in order to give. No, I think that was a really powerful. Uh, perspective right there that you complete the whole cycle、yes. by receiving it because, for you know, for somebody to give, there has to be somebody who is receiving it. I think I loved that analogy, which is really, really、uh, powerful. So, is there something that you will suggest for people who、uh, struggle with, you know, in a practice level? Like, is there something that they can practice next time somebody g i v e them instead of the first thought that's gonna be like, oh, I don't want to receive this, I, you know, you didn't really have to do it, like making uncomfortable? How can we switch that? So, just imagine、um, a time that、uh, when you were giving something, like a birthday present, and your friend said, No, 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 I can't take that.、Mm. You, know, you feel hurt.、Mm. And、uh, just imagine a time that when you give a, a, gave a birthday present and she or he be super happy, Oh, thank you, BJ. You really wanted to have this. Thank you so much. You feel so happy.、Mm. So, you have a choice of a disappointing、uh, somebody. Or you have a choice of pleasing somebody,、mm. making that person the happiest person.、Mm. Uh, you have a choice. If you receive well,、um, you can make somebody very happy.、Yeah. So you have to learn、mm. to be able to receive well.、Mm. So that way,、uh, the giver、uh, really enjoys it.、Mm. I think that's a very practical way to go about it. And, uh, uh, and one of the things that I have. You know, also learned is like be open.、Um, like when somebody's like, you know, you speak a lot in the stage and stuff like that, right? And this is something that I've heard at one of the events. Like when you're on stage and when your audience is like sort of giving you a standing ovation or just clapping for you and cheering up, and a lot of people are like, oh, wow, that's good. And, you know, people feel, you know, like happy, but they don't really show it. <laughs> but like just spread your arms wide and just like let that energy come in, and which I、uh-huh. think is a great, you know, physical、right. practice of like being、right. able to receive. Yes, there is expression in Japanese when you're in the situation. I want to hide in a cave. So、yeah. that's, a, that's a feeling I、mm. always get.、Mm. <laughs> But instead of hiding in my cave while they're giving me a standing ovation,、yeah. I try to sh- receive、yeah. 
as much as possible. So moving on, the other thing, Ken, that I want to talk about is the whole scarcity mindset. You talk about it in your book. So first, help us understand what scarcity mind, mindset is. And uh, also, do you think it is possible for everyone to have enough? There is a study done in 1970s by a French scientist, uh, I think it's an economist, uh, that we have enough natural resources if we distribute right. Mm. Unfortunately, our distribution is not set up right mm. uh, in terms of money and also in terms of resources. Like, um, I think uh, uh, top 20 countries are wasting all the resources, food and energy, and in the big houses, and, and then the, the uh, distribution of, of the food and all the resources are not going to uh, somewhere in Africa and other parts of the world. So if you distribu distribute right, I think we have no problem, mm. even now. Mm. Mm. Got it. So, um, so from the you know mindset of scarcity at the individual level, yes. if somebody feels that for, for me to have mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. somebody need to not have it. Like, and I love how yes, Navajo yes. becomes so, is like um, a zero sum game. In my, yeah, in mm. my seminar, we do a lot of uh, fun, fun things, and one of them is a money passing game. Mm -hmm. The thing we do is that when we pass out money with six of us, so first of all, we do this very slowly. So I said, next, 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 when you're supposed to pass the money to the next person, very slowly. If the money flow is slow, mm -hmm. economic is slow. Mm -hmm. So that means if you receive $2,000 uh, a month income, $2,000 expense. No money left, but uh, it's slow. Mm. But if you uh, run the money faster, mm -hmm. so that means you receive $5,000 and then spend $5,000 or receive $10,000 and give out $10,000, which is more economically abundant. If you pass out the money faster, that means uh, you receive more and you give up more. Uh, at the end of the month, you have zero, but because of the economy circulating, um, the money will grow. That's how economy grows. So if you hold on to the money you have and not spending, all the economy will go down. So that's why we have to keep passing the money and, and not just hoarding it. So if you uh, re receive the money, you have a choice of saving it, but if you have a choice of uh, releasing it too. So if you release money right, uh, you are in the uh, beautiful flow of happy money. But if you hold on to the money tight, it's like food. When you eat, 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 but you, you refuse to go to the bathroom. I'm not going to release it. and <laughs> I want to hold on to the food I ate. <laughs> it's not healthy. So you have to release it so you can receive. And the more you release, the more economy grows. So once you get this idea, it's not a zero-sum society. Got it. So the, uh, you know, the one of the other things that, you know, we were talking about beliefs and I've made the uh, beliefs about my money and I have sort of, you know, you've started thinking about, oh, these are the beliefs that I have and next time I'm going to be more mindful mm -hmm. of these beliefs when, you know, things like, when I'm receiving something, I'm going to be a little mindful of, uh, you know, being open and saying, hey, thank you so much for mm -hmm. getting this, like you said, right? Or just looking at my own beliefs about money and then like, you know, thinking that, hey, you know what, I really am, um, my future is going to be taken care of, which is the other concept that we, you know, um, discussed. And the other thing that I want to talk about is this. In your book, I've written, it doesn't matter how much money you have or mm -hmm. make it is your feelings about money that determine your wealth. Yes. So I have interviewed many uh, millionaires and billionaires, and I found out that uh, even if you have money, if your family life is miserable, you, are, you feel uh, l very lousy every day. So a lot of CEOs are experiencing a lot of breakups and hard time uh, uh, family-wise. And if you don't have a close relationship with friends, your life really sucks. But if you have a beautiful family, you have many friends, even though you don't have much money, you can always enjoy life. 
So it's up, it's up to how you um, form a relationship with money. So if you have no money, no money stress, uh, your life is in heaven. To do that, you need to have a certain money so you don't have to worry about your survival. But more than that, um, you can uh, focus on what's important in your life. So I probably assume in uh, uh, America or uh, Europe, probably like uh, $50,000 or $60,000 is, is a comfortable level. So if you're making less than that, you have to worry about money. But once you have a certain level of income, and I think a uh, number probably is different in India or in p parts of the India where you live, um, you, you have to know how much is enough. But if you have enough, uh, your car could be uh, bigger or more luxurious, but doesn't really influence your happiness level. It's like, who are you driving with, you know, uh, uh, determines your happiness. So instead of just um, focusing on uh, visible asset, you have to focus on invisible, invisible asset. That you mentioned uh, about, yeah, yeah by, mm. by doing that, you think that there's more to life mm. uh, when you think about it. Mm. Then just acting as a machine that makes money, pays bills, and worries about money all the time and goes to the <laughs> deathbed. Right, because you know there are so many great things in life. Mm. Um, nobody on the deathbed thinking, I wish I had spent more time in my office. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. there uh, there is uh, some there are so many uh, interesting worlds out there. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a very successful businessman in Japan, mm -hmm. um, he died at the age sixty, mm -hmm. and he was planning on retiring at six, uh, age six, sixty five, and start exploring the world. Mm -hmm. So by sixty five, he decided to keep working. Mm -hmm. So he started from one. A hamburger store to like 500 hamburger stores. Wow! He brought his company to public, but his uh, his life was create another shop, another shop, mm -hmm. another shop. He was very successful, mm -hmm. but his uh, his real dream mm -hmm. is to visit all the museums in the world. Mm -hmm. He was planning to do that after he's 65, and mm -hmm. he he had no plan of dying at age 60. Mm -hmm. So if uh, with the money he had, he could have retired at age 55 mm. and start exploring a uh, museum, mm. spending his last five years. So you have to remember, life is to be enjoyed. So you have to figure out how much is enough and don't focus too much on money making because mm. there are so many th great things in life that you can enjoy. That's a great takeaway for somebody who's listening to this, that you need to know mm -hmm. How much money do you need? Right. Because a lot of us are running in this race mm -hmm. of making more, right. wanting more money mm -hmm. without knowing how much do I need and why do I need it. Right. But people don't think about it. Mm. So I hope you start thinking. And in my entire life, how much should I earn? Mm. And how much should I save? Mm. And then um, if you could die with zero money, mm. that is a master of money. <laughs> Is there a framework that you want to give to people who are listening on how they should think about how much money they need and why do they need it? Like, what are the things that they can keep in mind? It's so um, different yeah. to mm -hmm. individual. Like, if you're like me, mm -hmm. who want to share what you have, uh, I think you need to make more money. But if you are uh, okay with your family members, you shouldn't, uh, you don't need so much money. Mm. So, uh, depending on what you want to do, you know, do you want to invite uh, your friends to your um, house, you want to have a little bit bigger uh, house. You want an extra you know, uh, guest room and all that. And, but if, you don't, if you're not interested in that, you could be comfortable hmm. in a small house. Hmm. Hmm. Got it. So, uh, you know, I think that is another really good takeaway um, also from the book and from the conversation, what you said that you need to know uh, where you should stop. And the other one concept that you talk about in your book is the money container that mm -hmm. we all have. What is, you know, what is the concept? Maybe you can simplify for that, for right. the audience. So when I was helping my clients file taxes in my 20s, I realized that uh, he was, uh, uh, I had the two identical clients. They were like 35 years old. And they came from a very similar university. They majored in econ economics. One was making uh, about half a million dollars. And then the other was making 
uh, $50,000, so 10 times different. And they, they are not so different. They are very in, uh, intellectual. They have a very good business background. But why are these two making 10 times different uh, income? And then I realized that uh, people are born with a uh, certain size money container. Mm -hmm. Someone is born with a big one, like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and somebody with a smaller one. And I think it's decided. You know, I think uh, in India, you know, Ay Ayurvedic charts, it says certain, you know, things. And I agree with that. Of course, you can change your de uh, destiny. Um, but um, usually, I can really tell that uh, certain size container. Um, so I'm not going to be a billionaire mm. in my life. Mm. Um, I'm not meant to be. So I'm not aiming for that either. Mm. But I'm comfortable. You know, mm. I don't have to worry about money. Mm. I can live for the uh, rest of my life without working. And that's important for me. Mm. So I, uh, my size is probably a little bigger than the regular people. Mm. But it doesn't have to be huge, uh, super huge. Mm. So if you try to make it bigger than you should, it's going to create a crack mm -hmm. in your money container. Mm -hmm. So you have to know the right side. And if you want to make it bigger, you have to start giving more to other people. Mm -hmm. And as, as a result, you receive more. Mm -hmm. By doing that, you, mm -hmm. your money container grows. Mm -hmm. But if you win a lottery, mm -hmm. uh, and, and a lot of money um, comes into your money container, mm -hmm. it's going to uh, crack your container. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people who win the lottery in a few years, they lose everything. Yeah. It's because their money container was small. Mm. Mm. And like you said, that you can increase the size of container by getting into this flow of receiving and giving, receiving. And giving. Yes, but not overnight. Mm. It's, uh, don't expect a tree to come up and mm. just bear fruits in two days. Mm. It's going to take seven years, or nine years. So you have to wait. Mm. It's a long-term game. Mm. So I suggest people um, to take time mm. to get wealthy mm. because the process is more fun. Mm. You know, if you get uh, rich in two days, mm. it's not fun mm -hmm. because going up and down the hills mm. uh, is, has been such a wonderful memories for me mm. because I've uh, experienced a lot of wins mm. and a lot of losses too. Mm. Because uh, on my deathbed, I will remember all the terrible times I Oh, damn, that was so hard. <laughs> that was so fun. Yeah. So all the negative ones mm. turn out to be fun memories in your life. Mm. Mm. So don't be afraid. Take a risk. <laughs> yeah, got it. So uh, the other thing that you talk about in your book, mm -hmm. the title of the book is Happy Money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've to a certain extent touched upon that, what happy money is. And, uh, you know, can you explain more on what do you mean when you say happy money? Like, it's, is it like your money quite literally smiling on your pocket there? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, happy money makes you smile when you receive it. That means you have made somebody happy and then as a result, you're receiving it. And happy money gives you um, uh, ir irritation and also a squeeze feeling when you can receive unhappy money, when you uh, spend uh, money for the bills. Uh, you feel squeezed or frustrated. So unhappy money gives you bad energy, whereas happy money gives you such a big joy, like your grandparents or parents give you some money uh, for birthdays and stuff, and you feel so happy, even though the, the amount is very small. Uh, that gives you so much joy. Mm -hmm. And what role does gratitude play in all this? So uh, I uh, suggest um, you can start saying, I, I suggest arigato your money. Uh, that's what my mentor Wahe Takeda told me. Uh, thank your money when you appreciate um, money uh, when it comes in. And appreciate the money going out uh, when you spend money or uh, pay bills. Also say danya word to your money. And I use a foreign um, language. Whenever so you're it traveling. Make, yeah. makes it more cool. Yeah. So uh, for you, you can use danke or merci, or, you know, uh, she or whatever the language you want to use. Uh, you can use arigato, my money, when it comes in. Uh, I'm going to use danya word every time I receive money yeah. <laughs> because it's more fun. Mm. So once you start appreciating money coming mm. in and going out. So every time money comes in your bank account, you say, thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. because somebody mm. trusted you. 
you have done something and then、mm. you receive that money.、Mm. So you say, thank you, thank you, thank you, money for coming.、Mm. Thank you.、Mm. So、uh, subconsciously, you're sending a message to yourself that money is good,、mm. money is fun,、mm. money is、uh, a joy. And by spending money, Uh, a lot of people think, I don't want to spend this money,、mm. you know, don't go away,、yeah. you know, don't ditch me, <laughs> so don't dump me. Instead, you can say, Thank you for staying with me, come back with your friends, lots of friends,、mm. <laughs> next time,、mm. and then let go.、Mm. It's as if you see your best friends off, and then your friends will come back.、Mm-hmm. You, know,、uh, you hope your friends will come back soon、mm. because you had such a great time、mm. with your friends.、Mm. And so, Uh, you send them off and then come back anytime. That gives you such a be- deep, fun feeling in you.、Mm. And as long as you can do that, you enjoy money both coming in and going out.、Mm. You have no attachment. So, the, all the suffering around money is attachment.、Mm. So,、um, you should not attach to the money.、Uh, otherwise, uh, you uh, lose balance in your life.、Mm. A lot of people want to、uh, attach the money. That's why they cannot enjoy、uh, your leisure time,、mm. your quiet time, your peaceful、mm. time with your family members.、Mm. So, if you let go of the attachment, you can enjoy your family time more. Mm. Mm. Do you want people to treat money, like you said, let go of the attachment, which means like remove emotion out of like money as a, as a thing? Is that what you meant? Uh, just appreciation, pure appreciation,、mm-hmm. you can do that. But if you have negative uh, uh, emotions attached to it, you know,、um, it's going to、um, uh, create suffering in you.、Mm-hmm. Uh, because I need this money, otherwise,、mm-hmm. you know, I have to have this. You know,、um, and this all、uh, guilt, shame, embarrassment, we all have、um, these negative feelings around money. So, you need to clean it, you need to cleanse it, you need to heal them. That's why I teach、uh, money healing.、Mm-hmm. You know, I'm called a money healer in Japan because I heal a lot of money wounds.、Mm-hmm. And what、people. are some of those?、Uh, for example, when, we were,、uh, like、when I was seven, I wanted a mi- mountain bike.、Mm. But my, my parents said, that's too expensive. Like, I was so hurt because I thought I was an, already an adult. You know, a seven year old boy thinks that he's already grown up. <laughs> And then、uh, a few years later, I got a m- mountain bike, but then I got a huge cut. So they were right.、Uh, I, it was too early for me. They meant that was too early for me, but、uh, I, the way I translated it in me is like, you are not worth the mountain bike. That's exp- too expensive. So a lot of us have been denied for a dream mountain bike or PlayStation or summer camps and ballet, soccer lessons. Uh, or cricket lessons, you know, we wanted it so badly, but we didn't get it、uh, for our birthdays and Christmas or your holidays. And then we have this grudge, like, because of money, I wasn't loved. Because I wasn't a b- good boy or good girl,、um, I wasn't given something. So that stays in, in, within us. So as we want, say, college education, We think our parents are not wealthy, so I shouldn't, I'm not going to get it. If I want to start a company, I don't think I can do it. I want to write a book. No, you can't. You know, so all the negative things that、uh, uh, voice inside is telling you, you cannot do it because I don't have the money. So, money could be the reason for not starting your travel, for not marrying, for not starting a business. So,、uh, everybody blames money for that, but it, it's actually in you. It's your negative、uh, beliefs about money that you cannot start things. Because, you know,、uh, for proof, a lot of people start the business without much money. A lot of people get married without money. A lot of people go on、uh, world travel without money. I, one of my students who was in college, he wanted to go around the world, but he said he had no money. What can I do, Ken? And I said, Just、uh, persuade 30 adults around you and start sending $100 every month for the next six months. So that's about $600, right?、Uh, do you think you can find them? I don't know. I'll give it a try. And a few months later, he came back and he found like 45 people、uh, who just pledged to do that. 
So he was so smiling when he just set off for、uh, world travel. So even if you have no money, you can rely on people and ask the money、uh, to do that. And a lot of people are generous enough to give you the money to achieve your dream if you're passionate about it. So passion is more important than money. Makes sense.、Uh, you know, in your book, you said that. Gratitude is that's it, like be thankful, be happy, and be have gratefulness. Like, that's all you need to sort of start on this journey, right? And we talked about how being feeling grateful for what you already have sort of gets you in this flow and also sort of helps you start building positive beliefs about money. Right, is there any、um, one thing that you said is like arigoto your money, right? Right, and when you are giving money to somebody, you bless that hey, I bless that you,、um, you know, maybe this money b l e s s you and your family, right? Right, so once you um, um, start appreciating or having gratitude around that uh, uh, money or、uh, life opportunities, it just says、uh, thank you back. So, if you love money, money loves you. That's how it works. That is the beauty of things. So, I fell in love with India, and you opened the door for me to India. You know, remember last week? So,、uh, you opened the door to India. I fell in love with India. So, I have a feeling I will just come,、uh, come back to other cities as well. So, as much as I love India, I hope India loves me. But that happens. If you love something more, I love book writing, I love writing books. So, books love me. So, it's a, like a huge mutual respect and love between books and me. So, I have built up so much gratitude in my life. I have so much love for people.、Uh, it was only limited for Japanese people. <laughs> That's why I work in Jap- Japanese. But now I want, I want to expand into、um, uh, humanity. No,、uh, I only speak English, but、uh, I hope I can、um, have a Uh, dialogue like this in English speaking countries. So, my love for other people o p e n up new doors for me. That's why I'm happy getting interviewed by you in India, in Delhi. And I'll do f l y to Europe、uh, next month. And、uh, a few months later, I'll be in, in South America. So, my love to share what I know about happy money brings me out to the world. So, what you love is very important. So, love money, money will love you. Mm-hmm. So, Ken, if you were in your 20s or maybe in your 30s today,、mm-hmm. and、uh, you know, and you were seeing everything that's happening in the world right now, the pressure to be 30 under 30, 20 under 20, 40 under 40, make things happen like by the time you hit 25, retire by 35. Start traveling the world, be financially free, and there's like a sense of pressure a lot of people in 20s and 30s sort of feel right now with, and,、uh, with the current state of the world and the social media and so on and so forth, right? So there's、uh, a lot of FOMO in terms of hey, look at this kid, like in 25, he made fortune, and I'm like 35, I'm not even able to do half of it or maybe even a quarter of it. Um, so, imagine you, you know, if you were in 20s or 30s,、um, what would you do and,、uh, you know, and what are the things that you suggest for the people in that age group? I think the, the most important thing is don't compare yourself with other people. You, know, you may be taller, you may be shorter, you may be bigger, you may be thinner, but we are born in our own unique、uh, way. So,、uh, you should not compare with you and the other people. So, I suggest you should not、um, uh, look at social media so much, you know, <laughs> because、uh, Facebook will make you miserable <laughs> because you only see the best part of other people.、Uh, on the you know, beautiful pictures in exotic islands, you know, when, when you're doing this,、uh, she or he may be miserable after five seconds of the, taking the photo. Uh, but you just seen the best of other people, you feel miserable because you compare with potential you. So I think the only thing you should compare is uh, 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 you of yesterday. Am I、uh, being a better person compared to yesterday? Am I being more productive 
you know, am I uh, happier? So if you compare with yourself and your potential you, I can be this. I, I hope I can be this. And if you just keep comparing yourself, at least you, sh you will not feel miserable. And take your time. If you just um, become wealthy in two years, you're going to lose all the money in two years. So build your uh, credentials, build your credibility uh, in terms of 10 years or 20 years. So go slowly, and then you build a very good foundation. And so it's not going to um, fall. Uh, if you build a sandcastle in two days, you can do it, but it's going to get washed out. I suggested you should not invest in bitcoins and stuff uh, last year. It could go up and it could go down. So uh, uh, invest wisely. You know, now is not a time to invest. Uh, if, you're prof if, if you're professional, maybe not. But if you're just a regular people, uh, investing could be gambling in this uh, opportunity. So, so invest in yourself. Uh, invest in, uh, uh, in something that improves your skills. So you will be the most uh, precious asset you have, unless you're already a millionaire. So uh, you should invest in yourself so uh, you can create wealth. Uh, don't um, listen to other people, just somebody made a killing and Bitcoin investing and all that. They may be a, a, a homeless by now, you know, uh, even if you were successful last year. So don't leverage yourself too much. Because um, uh, the longer it takes uh, to be uh, uh, wealthy, uh, the more stable you will be. Mm. So don't rush and take your time mm. and enjoy the process. Mm. You mentioned about Wahei Takeda, who is yes. often considered as Warren Buffett of uh, Japan, who mm -hmm. is your mentor. What is the number one thing that you learned from him? I think uh, the love he had, unconditional love. So he was so uh, generous with everybody he meets. He always carried uh, gold coins in his pocket. Mm -hmm. And then whenever he sees a beautiful smile, uh, he gives out a solid gold coin, which is about $1,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he makes sure, like for, for this time, uh, he would probably give it to you, right? Mm -hmm. But he was so generous enough to the camera person and the secretary and somebody who's you know, around it. So the one time I brought 15 people. So I, I thought I would be the one who get it. But he gives out to everybody. Mm. And there was one guy who went to a bathroom. So he didn't get it. So he was so shy. Can, can you ask him? I was in the bathroom. I didn't get one. And uh, I asked Ms. Uh, Wahei. And then, of course, I'm so sorry I didn't notice you. And he was almost in tears, mm. you know, and he was so generous with everybody. So um, I made it a rule to um, do the similar things. Mm. You know, I can afford to give out gold coins everybody and I meet, but I created special pens. Mm. Um, so uh, wh whoever I meet, I try to give one. Mm. So I brought a lot in India. Mm. I'm, I'm going to give it to you later. But uh, so just giving out and also unconditional love is something I learned from him and I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I always ask myself, what if uh, Wahe Takeda lives in my, in my body? Mm -hmm. What would he do? Mm -hmm. So uh, that is uh, a big thing. And also my other hero is Gandhi. Mm -hmm. What if Gandhi, part of his soul is in me? What would I do? Mm -hmm. So he's been such a great hero when I was 13, since I was 13, mm -hmm. uh, watching the movie. Mm -hmm. I think that was really some, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so my love for Indian food and Gandhi is, is just brought me here. Mm -hmm. One thing that you mentioned in your book, which in context to what you just shared, which I was very deeply able to resonate with every time you give something to someone, maybe you donate or maybe just buy a meal or just, you know, hand out cash or something or maybe buy gifts for, you know, people close to you. That, I, you know, when you when I read it in your book, then that that's when I was, I was able to sort of resonate. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, which is when you give, it also gives you a sense that you have a lot uh, you know, you already have enough. Yes. And which I think is a great way to rewire your right. brain from thinking. Yes, that. you got it. Yes, that's why I suggest people, 
if you start worrying about money, give something. Like when you find a box uh, for uh, donations at the supermarket, uh, give like 10 cents or a dollar, you know, whatever the rupees uh, you have. It doesn't have to be expensive. Just give something. So then you feel good. So uh, once you start doing it, you feel like you have more than enough. So um, I hope you share just a tiny bit of money generously. So once you do that, that makes you so happy. I always have uh, $5 uh, in my pocket. Um, so whenever I stay in a hotel, I bump into a, a, a cleaning person with a cart. So I give the money, uh, say thank you. So even though she or he is not cleaning my room, it's okay. Uh, but I see, mostly, I see a beautiful smile. Yeah. So it's, a, it's like a treat for me yeah. by sharing uh, what I have. Mm. Uh, and a little money, I can make people very happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to share. I'm going to shoot you some of the statements. Yes. Okay. And mm -hmm. then you'll have to agree or disagree. Okay. And then you can explain it. Okay. The first one. Money can buy happiness. It can, if you play smart. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't have a guarantee. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's better to cry in Ferrari than in the road. Say it again. It's better that I, I would rather cry in my Mercedes than crying in, in, in on the road. <laughs> I think as long as you cry, you're not happy. <laughs> but I'd rather cry in a Mercedes than on the street. But mm. yeah. So I think uh, uh, you have to find something that will just uh, make you feel a little easier. Mm -hmm. All these people who have a lot of money, they must have done something wrong. That's why they are rich. It's not possible for anybody to become rich if they are doing things right. I don't know. Um, some people have done something bad. Some, some people made their way uh, by doing so many great things. Because if you don't keep uh, enriching other people, mm. you cannot win. Mm. Because if you're a cheater, mm -hmm. people find out that and you don't want to do business with you. Mm. So at least you must have made profit for other people. Otherwise, you cannot stay in business. Mm. So uh, as a result of um, your um, successful business, mm -hmm. uh, you must have done something right. Mm. So I focus on what they have done right instead of the, what they have done wrong. You keep asking great questions, by the way, BJ. <laughs> Thank you. You've done a, a homework so well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't talk about how much you earn to anybody. You should keep it super secretive. Oh, that's what's so interesting about the culture. You know, at my Japanese um, reunion, mm. high school reunion, mm. uh, we talked about money and then we're discussing how much money we make. And casually, in North America, they would never do that. Mm. And you can shock an American businessman by asking how much money he made last year. And uh, the funny thing is, uh, uh, Japanese people, businessmen don't mind talking about their, their income, mm. but they'll be shocked if they're asked about their sexual life. Mm. And American business can tell you, so, you know, in details. <laughs> so uh, they don't have that shame around it. So and European uh, people are similar to America. I don't know about Indian people, but sex and money are such a secretive thing. So um, some people want to keep it private, other people are very open, which is very interesting. Mm. <laughs> Awesome. This has been such a great conversation, Ken. So I have one last question. Yes. Um, you do quite a bit of a speaking assignment. You you know speak across Japan and now across the world. Um, and uh, imagine that you're standing on a stadium. And this is the largest stadium that has ever been built in the history of the world. Mm. And there are millions of people on that stadium eagerly, passionately waiting to listen to the biggest lesson that you have learned in your life. What would be your message? That is a very, very, very good question. I may not be answering it right now, but I will just start thinking about this uh, for a long time. Mm -hmm. So the answer I came up is enjoy every second of life. I'm not going to talk about money mm -hmm. because money is not so important mm -hmm. once you enjoy every second of your life. Mm -hmm. So do what excites you the most mm -hmm. and then enjoy it. Mm. And, and uh, don't think of money. Don't mm. think of how you can be successful. Mm. As long as you 
are in the moment, mm -hmm. enjoy every second of your life, it opens up the next door and the next door and the next door and uh, uh, money will just find uh, its way to you. So as long as you enjoy your life fully, mm -hmm. you can find happiness mm -hmm. in there. Be in the happy state, be enjoy your moment, have the positive energy, money loves high energy. Yes. Thank you so much again. This has been such a great conversation. Thank you so much, Daniel Word, and um, love. I'm sending all my, all my love to the viewers and listeners and to you. Thank you. This has been a great conversation. Thank you. It was worth the visit from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. I'm glad. Super. Soon, great. Wow. Ooh. It's getting great hot job. in here. Nice. It was Thank great. You. Yeah. Okay. Um, people are watching it again, too. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs>